Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the new color grading controls that are in Lightroom. Now, to really truly understand how to color grade an image, you have to understand two things. First, how do the controls actually work? And then, how do the controls actually affect the various tones on an image? Let's start with how do the controls work? When you're in the develop module of Lightroom and you open up the color grading tab, you'll be presented with what's called the three-way view. You'll have individual color wheels for midtones, shadows, and highlights. You'll also have three sliders, one slider under each of the color wheels, and you have two sliders at the bottom. Now, if you prefer, you could work on the tones individually by going, let's say, right here, and we're working on shadows. Click next to that, you're working on midtones. Next to that is highlights, or if you want to give the entire image the same color tint, you could go to global. Now let's stay with this three-way setting first. How do these controls work? You see you have these color wheels. Now let's go with midtones. I have this image here. It's medium gray. It's 50% gray. So we'll go to this midtones control. If I want to give this medium gray image a yellow tint, I would go to the center of the color wheel and click on this little circle and move it towards yellow. And when I move it towards yellow, you could see the further out or the further I go out towards the outside of the color wheel, the more saturated the yellow is. As I move it towards the middle of the color wheel, the less saturated the color is. Now, if I move it out, you'll see along the top there, there's H, S, and L. H stands for hue angle. Yellow has a hue angle of 60, so I am on absolute yellow. S saturation is at 100, so I have it fully saturated. If I wanted to reduce the saturation, I could pull this in. If I wanted to change the actual hue angle, I could just move it to a different color. So you could just move it around. So that's H and S. Now, U angles are kind of a common thing, often used. If you just Google U angles, you'll find a lot of different uh, charts and color wheels that will give you common U angles. So you could know that yellow is 60, green is 120, cyan is 180, blue is 240, magenta is 300, and red is zero. So you could get those common U angles, but you could also get the shades in between as well. So we have the H and the S. What's that L? Well, that's luminance or the brightness, and that's what this slider does. If I move it to the right, I'm adding positive luminance to it. You can see it's going plus 70, 80, 90, up to a plus 100. So I'm making it brighter. If I move it to the left, I'm reducing the luminance all the way down to minus 100. So that's the luminance level. Now, if you just want to temporarily turn off this color wheel, just click with the left mouse button on this little eyeball and hold in the left mouse button and you'll temporarily turn it off, let go, and you turn it back on. If you want to reset the color wheel, you could do it two different ways. You could just double click right on midtones and you'll reset it. Or if you prefer, you could hold the Alter Option key and Alter if you have PC option, if you have a Mac and you could see it changes into reset midtones and you could single click to reset it. So these are how you would use these three different color wheels um, configuration. They all work identically. Now we have a couple sliders down here. We'll talk about those in a moment. Now, how does it really affect the tones in an image? Let's go to this. We have three different color bar, three different gray bars. We have absolute white actually on the far left. Medium gray, 50% gray in the middle, and black on the far right, absolute black. If I go to shadows, and let's say I want to put yellow tint on the shadows. So I'd move this towards an H of 60. And you can see that it's mainly, actually it's only affecting the medium gray. It's not affecting the absolute black at all. It's, of course, not affecting the white at all. So it's only affecting that medium gray and I'll reset that. Similarly, if I go to the highlights and I move that, I want to put yellow in the highlights and I move it towards 60, an H of 60, you can see that it's mainly affecting the medium gray in the middle. It's not affecting the white and it's not affecting the black. So 
what you do when you color grade an image is you're just affecting the tones that are between absolute white and absolute black. So to better explain that or demonstrate that, I have this image. There's no absolute white or black in this image. We have light gray, medium gray, and darker gray. Now if I go to shadows, and again I want to put yellow, let's say I just choose yellow because I think it's, um, you could see it more readily. You could see that it's affecting the darkest gray most of all, medium gray a little bit, and the lighter gray really not at all. Right? Similarly, sorry, if I double click, there we go. If, similarly, if I go to highlights and I move that towards yellow, you'll see that it's mainly affecting the lighter gray. It's affecting the medium gray a little bit, and it's really not affecting that dark gray at all. So you can see how these work. Now, if I again, if I go to midtones, you'll see that it will mainly affect the medium gray, and it affects the other two a little bit, but not as much. So you could see how those work. And to further carry along with this demonstration, I'll go to this set of gray bars. We have absolute white on the far left, absolute black on the far right, and varying shades of gray between. Again, we'll go to the shadows, and I'll move it towards yellow. And you could see that it's pretty much adding yellow to everything right of center except for absolute black. So these three gray bars, it's mainly putting the yellow to those darker gray bars. All right, now I'll reset that. And I'll go now to highlights and I'll put that towards yellow. And you can see that that's mainly, mainly adding the yellow to left of center, the lighter gray bars, and it's not affecting white. Now, what about this blending and balance? Well, first of all, blending will blend the color tint you just added to the tones you did to the existing color in the image. Now, because these were gray bars, there was no color there. So if I move blending, what it will really do is, if I move it to the right, it will increase saturation in this case. If I move it to the left, it will decrease saturation. So that's really only doing that because I have gray bars. If these were color bars, it would blend that yellow with the colors that were below it. Balance, on the other hand, will push that highlights either more towards the midtones or less towards the midtones. Now I have, again, I have hue angle of 59, which is yellow. 60 is yellow, but it's close. And saturation at 100. If I go to balance and move it to the right, you can see how it's starting to push that yellow on those darker gray bars. If I move it to left, it's taking it away from the darker gray bars. And the more I move it, the more it will just kind of relegate it to the lightest gray. So you could see how balance will balance the shadows and highlights between the midtones, or onto the midtones. Now, what about a real world example? Well, let's go to a real world example. There's two different ways you could use it. You could actually color grade a black and white image. That's what I like to do. Some people though, or probably most people, prefer to just color grade a color image. And we'll do both. Here's a black and white image. And let's go to an individual uh, configuration, shadows only, because I want to show you this layout here. First of all, <clears throat> when you color grade, what many people like to do is they like to use complementary colors. Now there's two different sets of complementary colors. There's primary complementary colors and there's secondary complementary colors. It doesn't matter which one you use. They're both very commonly used and they both give great effects. Primary complementary colors use the RGB color space. So you're going to use uh, red is a complement of green and vice versa. Blue is a complement of orange and vice versa. And there's all complements in between. If you Google primary complementary colors, you'll get a lot of color wheels that will show you complementary colors. A complementary color has a uh, color on one side of the wheel and its complement is on the opposite side of the wheel. And you could actually just eyeball it here if you wanted to. But you could Google it. You'll also get charts with U angles if you want and stuff. Secondary complementary colors use the CMY color space. So the complement of red in the secondary, the secondary complement of red is cyan. The secondary complement of green is magenta. The secondary complement of blue is yellow. Now what a lot of people like to do is they like to tint the shadows blue. Now the U angle of blue is 240. So you could come in and just take this center wheel and move it 
so it says U of 240 over here. Or if you prefer, what you could do when you're in these individual shadows, midtones, and highlights of the color grading um, tab, you could go to this little expose triangle, click on it, and when you do that, you'll roll it open and you'll have actual sliders. So you may want to use this instead. So you could put this right on 240. It might be easier for you. You could always go in here and actually just type it in if you want. Then you could add, change the saturation. Now, as you can see, if I go way to the right, I'm putting a really heavy saturated blue in the shadows. But I just want a hint of it. So we'll just do a little bit. Then you could jump over to the highlights and using the um, secondary complementary colors, uh, since we put blue in the shadows, we would put yellow in the highlights. So yellow hue angle is 60. Again, I could go to the center wheel or I could just go to the slider and dial it in to 60. Those of you familiar with split toning, these sliders are the same. And then you could give it some saturation there. Then now again, I could affect luminance. I can make it a little brighter. I could jump over to here and make that a little, a little brighter, darker, whatever, you know, whatever fits. Then let's say I want to go to midtones and I want to put a cyan color in midtones. Now cyan is 180. So I could just dial it in right here with 180 and add some saturation there. Then I could experiment with blending. Now, since this is a black and white image, if I move it to the right, it just makes it a little more saturated. If I move it to the left, a little less saturated. Balance, if I move it to the right, it's going to put that highlight color, which was yellow, more into the midtones. If I move it to the left, it's going to put the shadow color, which was blue, more into the midtones. I'm just gonna leave that right in the middle. So that is a color graded black and white image. There's before and there's after. Now I mentioned that most people actually prefer to color grade a color image. And let's do shadows first. Now I mentioned that we have these sliders here, but there's another option as well. See this little swatch right here? If you click on it, you have some common colors right here. So I'm in shadows and let's say I just want to give the shadows a kind of yellowish hue. So I could go right there uh, with that. So the shadows have a yellowish hue. Then I could, could jump over to highlights and I could click on this. And let's say I want to give the highlights a hue that is actually in the, in the image already. Well, click on this little eyedropper and hold in the left mouse button. Then go over the color you want to use. And let's say it's just her skin tone. So I could use that as the color so that's another option there if you don't want to use the sliders then we could go over to midtones and I'll use the the color wheel itself and we'll do something like this I don't know and so we kind of gave it a color grade I don't really care for it but we did now I want to close out by talking about another tool that people often use with color grading and that is the tone curve what you need to do is use the point curve. This is the point curve, but by default, when you open up the tone curve in Lightroom, you'll be in what's called the parametric curve. A lot of people call this the region curve because you have these sliders down here and it says region. You don't want to use this. You'd prefer to use the point curve. So click right there. And then what a lot of people like to do is they like to go to the far left of the tone curve, which is where the shadows reside. And they kind of want to wash out the shadows by moving it that way. Then they'll go over here on this side and they might wash it out by moving it down or they might intensify it by moving it to the left, something like that. So a lot of people like to utilize the tone curve with color grading. So that's something you could experiment with. So I hope that makes sense of how to use the actual tools, how they work, you know, how they, uh, you manipulate the different hues, saturation, and luminance levels of each of the three different regions, that is the midtone shadows and highlights, how blending and balance work. And again, you could use the blending in this case because this was a color image to blend it with the existing colors that were there. And you could use balance to move either the highlights more into the midtones or to the left, you move the shadows more into the midtones. I'll just reset that. So you could do that as well. Um, overall, give you an idea how to use these. You could really uh, come up with some unique looks. I want to remind you, just Google for hue angles. So you get the different hue angles for colors. You'll get charts and you could also get like um, uh, color wheels that will show the 
common U angles, and also uh, Google primary complementary colors and secondary complementary colors. And that will help you better utilize color grading on your images. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.